so I've got um, all this mesh in my zebra scene, or sorry, in my Maya scene. Let me just try to delete the rest here. Take out my groups and then flip my selection. There we go. So um, this object, let's say I'm working on this object and I want to start to tweak it or do something different with it, or I may want to work on it inside of ZBrush. <coughs> I've got GoZ installed. So when you install it, it will uh, allow you to sort of quickly send mesh back and forth between software without having to go file, export, OBJ, you know, export the textures, then import them. And then, you know, if you had to do it all, especially if you have hundreds of objects, hundreds of textures, it can get really, really painfully slow. So this is so handy. I hit GoZ. It sends the mesh over, and I've got my mesh now inside of ZBrush. So let me just switch the material. So now I can hit Control D, let's say, to divide it and sculpt this thing if I want. I can maybe turn it into a, let's say, if I like this thing, I can view it from a top view. Uh, by the way, if you want to reset your pivots in ZBrush, you can go to Transform, uh, Set Pivot. So that will center the pivot nicely. Um, if you really want to make sure it's completely centered, if your object may be a little bit asymmetrical, you can actually just isolate a part of the mesh. So I'm going to hold Control Shift, uh, click and drag. Just going to make sure only my uh, central pivot or central uh, vertices or polys are visible. And I'll go to Transform, Set Pivot. So that will really center the, the pivot to the middle of this thing. And you can kind of test that via the uh, X key. So I've got this now centered. Uh, so now I can, like I said, I can sculpt on this thing. I can edit it if I want. Or I can turn it into an insert brush. Um, so let's say um, I decide to move some stuff around. Go to the move brush, right? Uh, something else I should mention too. So like if I'm building stuff in a more real world, real world scale, ZBrush works on kind of a really weirdly tiny scale, like a one to two centimeter range. So if you hit S for your brush size and it hits a limit, um, you can try to turn on dynamic, which may increase your limit, or you may have to go to preferences and go to draw size, and you want to increase your max draw size and maybe your dynamic scale. Again, I'll be careful with this and not crank that too high, but now my brush size can go a lot bigger, right? So I can go in and start to Let's say warp parts of this. So I'm just going to do some really quick changes. Or say like this. And then I can quickly just go Z right back. So if I come back, right, uh, that, that flower should have changed um, inside of Maya. I think it's sitting over here. Let me just see. Yeah, I think this is the new addition that I've got right here. There we go. So it's got those war those warps and stuff applied. So it's great because you can kind of use the best of Maya, tweak things, do some really clean UVs, send it back, right? So if I'm working on this, let me just uh, delete the rest of this stuff here. So I'll just flip my selection around. So this would be a typical way that I would work. So let's say I want to start going in and doing UVs. All right, I'll just do a really, really quick because this thing probably has really no great UVs right now. So I'll just take uh, the whole mesh, just simply go to Create Planar. Right, we've got a nice flat UV, and then if I go Z this back, it's going to update, right? So if I actually kind of go back to my Z plugin, back to work on clone, I always like to work on a clone just in case I screw up the mesh and I go to flatten, you'll see that's exactly the UVs I set up in Maya. So you can quickly go back and forth, back and forth. Um, yes, question? Is there Uh, it's it will be more important actually yeah to make UVs so uh, we'll come back to that I think in the afternoon but um, what's great about this too is so let's say you know if I if I do generate UVs you know maybe I'll I'll sort of take each shell I'm gonna pack these in their own sort of way so I'll go to um, layout right layout UV so they're all kind of packed now if I just simply go Z. It'll update this, right, with the, the, the sort of floating UVs. So if I flatten, there they are. It's updated super quick. What's also great about this, right, is remember I talked about polygroups. If I hit Shift F and go to polygroups, I can do uh, UV groups. Uh, sorry, uh, auto groups with UVs. So it'll actually independently color code each separate floating piece based on UVs. So it's actually a really quick way to get polygroups into mesh as well. 
Um, so this is great. Now I can isolate one of these leaves uh, for painting or sculpting or whatever it might be, right? There, so I can isolate that and sculpt on this independently, okay? So there's a really, really amazing kind of workflow between uh, software. Again, if I want to send it back, go Z, and it will update this uh, flower now, right? So there's the updated version. Um, one last thing, I'll, I'll, I'll reset this. So if you do want to set up GoZ uh, at home, or I think in the labs it might be a little bit uh, botched, the install. <laughs> um, the way to set up the install, usually when you first click on GoZ, it brings up a bunch of options for installing it in other software. So let me just make sure my is closed. Um, so if we go into uh, Preferences, GoZ, uh, this is what you typically see when you start up GoZ. It'll say, you know, uh, which software do you want to install. I'm going to do a force reinstall. So I'll force reinstall to Maya. So you'd say, you know, Maya's installed, I want to install to Maya. Uh, it will actually be able to send out to Sculptress, or uh, we have Sculptress installed, we have Photoshop installed. so. It will be able to output to Photoshop. I've never really sent to Photoshop, but if you do want to switch your software, you have to hit the little R key over here on the far right hand side. This is basically your GoZ, uh, GoZ line. So you can export everything, what's visible, uh, all tools, and you can reset uh, which software it's sending to. So let's say we GoZ to Photoshop. Oh yeah, there's no UVs, I guess, or I've got, I've got UVs that have overlapped, so Photoshop really doesn't like that. But um, let me load up one of the demo projects. So if I have good old Earthquake here, uh, he's got UVs. So um, let's, yeah, go Z him to Photoshop. His UVs are good and clean. Oh, they should be there. Well, if not, I'm going to quickly just freeze, go, um, or actually, let me unfreeze him. Uh, I'm going to go to work on clone. Sorry, the low res on Earthquake and work on a clone of this. So this is one of those situations where actually ZBrush doesn't like it when you have subdivisions. It refuses to unwrap things with subdivisions. So I usually just go to my low res, go to work on clone. He's got polygroups. I'm going to just unwrap him based on the polygroups. I'm going to flatten him to check him out. There they are. So you can do full character unwraps if you've got good polygroups. Copy UVs. Go back to the color version and paste the UVs from that, that clone onto this guy here. So now I should be able to go Z to Photoshop. Ah, Photoshop <laughs> or ZBrush being a little bit of a pain. So I think it doesn't have a texture map is what it's telling me. So I'm going to make sure he's got a 4K map. Go to texture, create from poly paint. So it's going to bake it out to these UVs. And now I should be able to go Z to Photoshop. There we go. Um, so yeah, I believe it's going to set you up in Photoshop 3D. Again, I really don't use this mode, but if you kind of want to play around with that and get the best of you know Photoshop uh, and ZBrush, you could do that. So yeah, I, I just personally haven't done this, but you can kind of texture paint this way if you need to. So maybe the director doesn't like his tattoos, right? We can <laughs> try to paint them out. So yeah, ZBrush, it's incredibly powerful. It has lots of options and lots of connections to other software. So. Can't, can't recommend it enough.